Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, thank you for tuning in to Team Forbidden's YouTube page again. It is Andrew the Collector here with a update for Flounderies. Um, like I said in my previous profile, I'm just going to refer to these as Flounderies because it's a lot easier to pronounce than Flounderies. Uh, just rolls off the tongue better. Uh, so with that being said, um, they got new support in the recent Battle of Chaos set. So with that, um, I believe they have gone up a tier in uh, competitive status. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So we're running three of the main staples, that being Rabina and Eglin. Uh, if you, you guys should remember this from my last profile, or if you guys don't know, the Flandry's main gimmick is to normal summon, normal summon, normal summon. Each of them has their own effect on when they are normal summoned. And once after, after their effect resolves, they give you ability to immediately normal summon another winged beast from your hand um, to your side of the field. So Rubina's effect is that when it's normal summon, you search a level four lower winged beast. Eaglin is the same thing, except it's level seven or higher. So basically the whole thing is that you normal summon out Rubina, search out Eaglin, then you get another normal summon with Rubina, normal summon Eaglin, and then so on. And then what, when, if they leave the field, they're banished instead. We'll do a quick combo af at the end on how to fully utilize these guys, but uh, for now that that's the, you're just gonna you want to run three of these. These are the main uh, uh, Flunderies uh, low level monsters that you run. For the other ones, we have two uh, Steer and one Toucan. Uh, Steer's effect is that when it's normal summon, you can target one card in either player's graveyard and banish it. And then Toucan's effect is that um, you, when it's normal summon, you can uh, add a Flunderies card that is banished and add it to your hand. So yeah, re uh, really good right there. Uh, but you only want to run uh, two and one. I think that's a pretty good ratio. I think in my last build, I ran two Toucans. Uh, that, that was a bit bricky, so I cut it down to one and it seems to be working just fine. Now for your boss, uh, boss monster, we have two Empens. This guy is the thing you want to get out um, as quickly as possible first turn. Um, so its effect is that uh, when it's normal summon, you can search out any uh, <coughs> Flandry spell or trap, and then you can normal summon one monster. Doesn't specifically say wing beast, it can normal summon out any monster. But in this particular build, you, that's pretty much all you run. Um, there are circumstances where if you have token collector against sword soul, you can just normal summon that out and then it cancels out their turn. But in this particular build, that clause doesn't really matter. And while it's face up, you're, it's pretty, basically a floodgate because your opponent's monsters that are special summoned and in an attack position can't activate their effects. And if this card battles a monster, you can banish a card from your hand to have that monster's uh, attack um, non-targeting. So yeah, really good. Two is, is perfectly fine for me. Um, you don't want to run um, any other ratio. A lot of people only run one. Uh, I don't know why, because if you lose this guy, he does not have the claws to get, to add back to your hand as the low level ones that did. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention. All the low level uh, Flandries monsters, if they're banished and you normal summon a monster, you can activate its effect to add it back to your hand. Um, uh, like I said, I'll go into a combo with it at the end and you'll kind of see why it's important. M-Pen does not have that ability. So if, once you lose it, it's really hard to retrieve it back. So I think two is perfectly fine. And for the one of monsters, we have one barrier statue of Stormwinds to search out uh, with Rabina if you already have Eaglin in hand. One Rise of the, uh, the Mega Monarch. Um, this guy is probably your secondary boss monster next to M-Pen. When this guy is normal summoned, you can, or tribute summoned I should say, you can target one card on the field and in either player's uh, graveyard and then return them both to the top of the deck. And if you tributed a wind monster with this effect, you can target an additional monster to spin back to the hand. Which a lot of times you will, since both Toucan and Eaglin are wind monsters. Uh, and even M-Pen if you want, really want to go that far, but you never really do go that far. Um, he is pretty expensive right now. Um, I was able to get a copy of him before he really skyrocketed in price. So if you have, if, if, um, you aren't able to get him, then you're fine with running to um, Apex Avion. This guy's incredibly cheap and he's still really good. He's not once per turn Omni Negate, so if you're able to get two of him out, which is possible, that's two negations right there and he, it's just recurrable. So, uh, yeah, that's also why you run Apex Avion. And that's it for the, mon uh, for the main monsters. Onto the only hand trap that we run is Three Dimension Shifters. 
One guy at my local said that if you have the power to abuse this card, you abuse it. And there's no other deck that I can really think of besides Grand Maju probably that really can abuse this card to its maximum potential. Um, so if you have no cards in your graveyard, you can activate this card in hand, discard it, and then for the next two turns, the field basically becomes Macrocosmos. It's insane. The only caveat with it is that if you draw into it late game, it sort of becomes a dead draw. So a lot of the times you want to you want to run, uh, see it in your opening hand as soon as possible, and a lot of decks can't really deal can't really deal with that essentially. Um, but it's not that big of an issue um, in this deck particularly, mainly because a lot of your monsters uh, banish themselves when they leave the field, so they won't even go to the graveyard. So you just have to be careful uh, with your spells and traps. You just kind of have to play it. Um, play it carefully, but it's a lot, it's, this is probably the deck that abuses it the most. So run three dimensional shifters, no less than three. Now after the spells, we have three of the map. Uh, this guy is, or this card is really good. <clears throat> it has two effects. The first effect is that you can reveal a, um, a uh, level one wing beast monster uh, in your hand. Banish a, uh, a another level one wing beast from your deck to, uh, uh, to your banish zone, and then you can do a uh, normal summon, which is not your main normal summon, by the way. So you use its effect to uh, reveal ro uh, Robin. Uh, use Maps effect to search out to banish Eaglen, and then you normal summon Robin. Chain one, chain two, add Eagle to hand, and this could search out for the Barrier Statue, and then you go from there. Its second effect is that when your opponent normal summons you can normal summon one of your wing, uh, wing beast monsters from your hand. And then basically start your whole combo during your opponent's turn. It's basically nuts. So run three, no less. The new uh, support card is basically the card that fixes the deck's main problem. Um, it's a quick play spell, Flunder uh, Flunderies and the Ad Advent of Adventure. Um, it's effect is that you banish one wing beast monster from your hand or face up, uh, or face up on the field. Um, and add one Flunder, uh, Flunderies monster or Flunderies field spell from your deck to your hand, then gain 500 life points. So essentially the biggest uh, caveat with uh, Flunderies is that if you ba if you basically have um, a Flunderies that's banished, you can chain lock your opponent so they can't ash you. Uh, but they still have to deal with uh, being targeted uh, for effects or, for, or like Ghost Ogre or Effect Veiler or infinite permits or something like that. That was their biggest issue. This fixes that. Because if you have this in hand, you normal summon this, chain one, chain two. If they try to veil or imperm, or imperm this, you can chain with this, banish the Rabina. They lose their target. You still get your search and add back to hand. Plus you get an extra monster or your field spell from your deck to your hand. That is basically nuts. So yeah, um, this card is starting to go up in price. Grab your uh, copies if you can. It's only an ultra rare. And run three, no less. And two of the unexpected wins. This is your hand fixer. Once per turn, it's a continuous spell. So once per turn, you can reveal up to two wing beast monsters you control. Send them to the bottom of the deck and then draw that same amount. Its second effect, which is probably the most broken one, is that if you were gonna tribute summon a uh, wing beast monster, you can uh, tribute one monster you control and send one card your opponent controls as one of the tributes for the tribute summon. That is like kaiju level removal basically in Flounderies. So for example, if you have one monster you control and your opponent has a face down card and you have Mega Monarch in your hand, you can tribute, tribute your um, your Rabina, and then send the uh, card your opponent controls to the graveyard to special summon this. It's not an activated effect, so your opponent can not respond to respond to this. It's a continuous effect, which makes it the most broken. So, uh, so yeah, three is a little bit bricky for me. I think it. I think two is perfectly fine. And then since we basically don't normal summon, uh, three pot of duality is just to help boost the consistency. If you can afford Prosperity, I would highly recommend Prosperity uh, in, uh, um, in addition to this, or Extrav if you want to go for more of the budget. Um, not Desires, we hate Desires in this deck, obviously. And our rest of our deck is uh, two Cosmic Cyclone and one Harpy's Feather Duster, because one of the biggest issues with this deck is definitely the back row. 
Monsters aren't really that big of an issue thanks to M-Pen, but the back row is definitely still a problem, especially for Elblitch. I have one Regeki for monster removal. Uh, Dimension Fissure, uh, again, it's the same thing as, uh, as Dimension Shifter. Uh, to where you can, where you don't really care about having your stuff, uh, your monsters banished. Um, you could also run uh, Macrocosmos. Again, I don't have Macrocosmos in this, so I'm not, uh, so I'm not running it. One terraforming to get to your field spell. Call by the grave because it's called by the grave. We still don't like hand traps, even though we have the ability to uh, to chain block them. And then one gold sark. Um, I would run more if it weren't limited. Uh, but like I said, your monsters lo uh, love to be banished, so you can activate this. Normal summon one of your low-level uh, monsters, and then chain one, chain two, the monster you just banished to add back to your hand. And that is it for the spell cards. On to the traps. Probably the most important trap is Flunderies and the Dreamy Town. This is a trap card that basically gives you an extra normal summon during your opponent's turn. It's it's great. It's basically like the map, only you can activate it during either uh, at any point. And the one card that not a lot of people are running is uh, Flunderies and the Scary Sea. Um, it's a counter trap that when your opponent special summons a monster for the rest of the turn, um, that opponent gets sent back to the to the either to the, to the hand or the extra deck, and for the rest of this turn, your opponent can only normal summon three times. A lot of people are really overlooking this for how great it is, but I, I, I honestly love it for how for how good it is, especially if you're in a pinch. The only caveat is that you have to control a tri uh, tribute summon uh, a tribute summon monster to activate it. But a lot of the times, if you have this with your M pen, there's not a whole lot your opponent can do. And then two solemn strikes to round up the round up the main deck. So honestly, that is it for the Flunderies deck. Um, I don't have an extra deck that I can show you because it, you can basically go with the extra deck however way that you want. You can go uh, Super Poly targets. You can either go Ghost Ogre targets, which is what I'm mainly gonna do once I get the rest of the stuff. Or you can just put in um, uh, the Zeus package or some of the Lyralisk monsters if your opponent is able to stop some of your plays just so you have something to go into. But honestly, the choice is up to you with how you want to do the extra deck, because like I said in my Dark Magician profile, the main juice of the deck is in the main deck, not necessarily the extra deck. Because a lot of the times with um, um, Artifact Scythe running around, your opponent likes to lock you out of special summoning from your deck, which this deck doesn't have a problem with. So yeah, um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our page again. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for on how to play this deck, uh, feel free to comment down below. And until then, we'll catch you guys later.